All right, where were we? Okay, so I'm gonna lay these out, but I need to actually look at the options uh, for my layout operation. So I'm gonna hold the shift key and do a left mouse button and that will bring up my layout options. So the packing resolution, we don't really care too much about this. This is kind of important though, the shell pre-transform settings. So there's shell pre-rotation. So that's gonna try to rotate the shells to get the most optimal packing. I'm gonna leave that off for now. Preserve 3D ratios means we're gonna actually rescale all the UVs to match what's going on in the 3D geometry. One, the other option is you can leave it with your scaling or you can preserve the 3D ratio, the UV ratios, which is, would be like my arbitrary thing here. So I wanna make sure that I'm, I'm gonna be rescaling my UVs so that I have a consistent taxol density for my entire mesh. Otherwise you might have like an area with a ton of detail and another area where it looks all, all grainy and pixelated and that's not really a, a good way to go. Texture map size, arbitrary at this point, we can say 2K. Shell padding, this is very important. So basically this is gonna be how much distance you have between your UV shells. And the reason that that is an important thing to keep in mind is the way that video games optimize the textures is, is you might start off with like a 2048 by 2048 image. You just think of it like a JPEG that's like 2000 pixels on either side. So while the object is occupying 2000 pixels on screen, like let's pretend that from there to there was 2000 pixels, it would make a lot of sense for you to have your full full res texture loaded on that object. But as soon as the object becomes, let's say that's now a thousand pixels from front to back, or the longest, you think of like a bounding sphere, like as soon as the radius on that bounding sphere is, well, let's, let's use diameter, is a thousand pixels, you are, if you've got a 2000 pixel texture load on there, you're wasting 50% of your texels, like they can't even render because there, there just aren't that many pixels on screen. So what you do is they, uh, the, the game kind of automatically will create when you, when you load in a 2K, it'll make a 1K and a 512 and a 256 and a 128 and a 64 and so on. So that as the object gets progressively further and further away from the camera, the game will automatically load in whatever the most efficient texture is for the object at that distance from the camera. So what happens is if you've got like your, in your texture borders, if the texture borders are very close together, you end up potentially having your seams show up. So let me just come back and turn my, my UVs back on. So you can see where my seams are, are these white lines. And I've done my best to try to conceal them. Like I don't have one running down the middle here, but whatever, you know, like you might, you basically just can potentially see little artifacting around your edges. So when you bake the uh, the textures using Painter or Marmoset or whatever, what they'll do is they'll actually take whatever the value on the edge of your, your uh, UV shell is and they'll just project it out. So it does correct that issue a little bit, but you need to have a little bit of space between your, your, uh, your UV shells in order to support that. So um, if that doesn't make a ton of sense, don't worry about it. Just understand that if you're dealing with something that's like a 2K, a 16 pixels is pretty safe. So that's gonna put 16 pixels between every UV shell and it's gonna look like that. So I know there are people out there that like to pack their shells by hand, but that seems kind of crazy to me because it's just, it's very difficult to get, to ensure that you're always gonna have, like that's basically our 16 pixel boundary there and it's pretty minimal. But you can see we have a lot of wasted space up here. So there might be some things that we can do potentially to get a little bit more space. So one of the things that like this area here, when you have little fingers poking off, that can be inefficient, but it looks like mine has actually done a reasonable job here of, of packing this stuff. So we can try, like everything is oriented vertically. So what if we th make a couple things horizontal. And in fact, we can try that. We don't have to go through and do it by hand. We can say, let's go ahead and shell pre-rotation. I don't actually think that's what I want. There we go. Rotate shells. So what this means is we have just allowed it to rotate the shells. It's going to maybe take a little bit longer, but, and I'm, I'm saying, I only want you to try all the shells at 90 degree increments. You could set this to much lower numbers and end up sitting around for a lot longer. Uh, but here we can say, okay, we're going to go ahead and rotate it. Everybody's going to get rotated 90 degrees because they're either vertical or horizontal. And we'll just see if we get a better pack. And one way that we can kind of measure this is by going to transform 
And then I'm just going to grab one of these shells and I'm going to go to my textile density and hit get. So right now it's set to 83 and that's based on the scene unit size. So like this is probably set to meters. If I set it to centimeters, that's going to be 830, right? So it's not really like this number here is not something that's carved in stone. It's, it's based, it's like a relative uh, measurement. And what that means is for every one meter of space out here, and who knows how big this thing is, let's say it's like, whatever, it could be a hundred meters for all I know. We're going to get 83 pixels or 83 texels of texture that we can apply to that. So we can probably figure out, if I go to, what is it? Settings, so windows, general editors, blah, 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 settings, preferences, preferences. You can see I don't do this very often, but there's something in here. We can find out where the units are. Settings, centimeters. Okay, so it's 83 texels per centimeter, which is whatever. I mean, it's it's probably fine. I, I tend not to worry too much about this. Where, where this becomes very useful is if you're like, you're making environment assets and you want to make sure that all environment assets have a minimum texel resolution of whatever it is, 250 texels per unit or something. So that way you can make sure that everybody on your team is hitting like the minimum. And if somebody's got like a thousand texels per unit, probably they need to rethink what's going on because their stuff is going to look over detailed. Uh, but anyway, so we've got 83 here. I'm not expecting this to be like night and day, but if we go ahead and enable rotate shells and hit apply. We get, yeah, so that was terrible. Surprisingly bad. So let's go ahead and, God, that's so funny. I'm just going to hit undo. This is fine. Let me try this again, 83, great. Okay. Like maybe, maybe coming in here and we can just try couple things. Generally speaking, I don't like second guessing Maya's pack because the idea is they probably know what they're doing. And the more time you spend messing with it, I'm going to go and turn rotate shells off. Right. Okay. So that bought me a little bit. And the reason I thought that was a good idea is because I could see that it has these two stacked up here. And it's like, I can't go any further than that because whatever, that's how long that is. But if I can give it a rotation, that buys us a little more space. So maybe this one we can try rotating and let's do another pack here. I'm going to apply and right. So like whatever, you know, pennies on the dollar basically. Okay. So we'll just call that good for now. Oh, and the other reason I like to use the automatic solution. See this guy is not quite as horizontal as it could be is I usually don't end up living with whatever, like this is my first GV layout. Oops, looks like I got one of those. The likelihood that this is what they ultimately look like is very, very low, very low. So the more time you spend, you know, on V1 before you've done any baking, it's probably just throw away. So, so don't, don't do that. Okay, fine. So let's go ahead and call those UVs done and take a little look here so you can see all of this geometry we've got these little facets and stuff everything pretty much needs to be in fact this is kind of an important concept i'm going to wait for the next video and then i will talk to you about setting up your your edge smoothing okay see you there